Hello, this is MicroJ101, and those arcs right there are amazing. Those are about four inches long, super hot arcs, like a microwave oven transformer arc. They are melting these screwdrivers there. They were glowing red hot there. I probably ruined them. Um, but those are coming from this flyback transformer that I just made. This was really easy to make, um, so I'm going to show you how to make this in this video. It's made out of just an old core from a flyback transformer, some magnet wire, newspaper, and canola oil I bought at the grocery store. So this is an amazing transformer, way better than the flyback transformers from TVs. You gotta make one, they're so easy. Um, so in this video I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's get started. Here's the flyback transformer that I ran on my um, ZVS driver a bit too long, probably about 10 minutes or maybe five minutes on 40 volts and it totally um, melted and, or it melted right there you can see. So I decided to, or it stopped working then, and so I decided to cut it apart and see what it looked like inside. So I just took the hacksaw to it, and here's the core, and, and as you can see, the inner windings there, those are the high, higher currents, the input windings, or the um, primary windings, and then all these right here, those are tiny. Even if I look under a, um, a magnifying glass, I can barely tell that they're... I can barely even pick out the individual wires, but you can see there in the middle is where it actually burned out. The wires heated up and arced across, I guess. There's no black. There is a little, that's just a little hole though, a little air space. So um, now I need a new flyback. Um, so I um, took the core and I am actually winding my own flyback I'm using newspaper and um, yeah, some, I believe this is uh, either 28 or 29 gauge wire. It's um. 0.3 millimeters in diameter and I'm not actually um, counting the windings as I put them on there but um, high one voltage one rules suggested to use about 600 windings so that's how many I'm gonna try to put on here I think I have about 600 now because what I'm basically doing is I just measure here and it's about um, 300 and 50 mil or 35 millimeters sorry so 35 millimeters, divide that by 0 0.3 millimeters, because that's how um, the diameter of the wire, and we get about 116 windings. So each layer, I have five layers so far, um, so that would make it about um, 600, so close enough. Um, and I'm just using a, my sewing machine motor that I wind all my coils with. Little foot pedal there. Strips of newspaper, and then I'm using little strips of newspaper along the side here to make it so that the the, um, the windings don't like fall out the end, I guess. I probably don't need to do that, but I'm doing that anyway. And um, so I just have it on an aluminum rod that's the same size as the core. So um, yeah, but and then I'm going to put it in oil so that it doesn't arc over. Um, so I'll probably put it under a vacuum as well after I put it in the oil to get all the air bubbles out so it's not possible that it could arc over. So, so now I just got to wrap it up with paper more and It'll be done, and then we can test it. Most likely overkill, but I put some string around it, or um, thread around it as well, just to hold it all together, because I'm thinking the glue will probably, I used um, Elmer's glue to hold the paper together. I'm thinking it may, um, when I put it in the oil, the um, glue may get dissolved by the oil, and it might come apart, so I wrap some string around it, just for extra measure. Um, now one thing I did do is I put um, wax paper, or I put oil on the, um, aluminum rod and then I put wax paper on it so that it um, will come off really easy. So let's take it off right now. So there we go, it slid right off. Now we just gotta pull the wax paper out of the middle here. Alright, there it is, all finished. Look at it, it looks really nice. It's pretty small and compact too, so I'm very satisfied with it. Let's see if it, if I'm satisfied with the arcs though. Alright, so a couple things I forgot to mention. After I put um, oil on the rod and then I put wax paper on, and then I glued the um, newspaper on. So I used Elmer's glue to do this mostly. I used a little bit of hot glue here and there. Um, I'm not sure if Elmer's glue is really the right type of glue because it is water-based, so that would mean it'd be conductive. But I think it'd be fine as long as you're able to get all of the um, water out. So, um, so the first layer, I did eight um, layers of newspaper, and then just normal newspaper, and then I... Um, wrapped my wire around it, um, about 120 turns on each layer, 
and um, so then on the ends I did the um, newspaper here, um, the little strips, and those, I'm not sure how many turns, probably about um, four or five, um, but I wrapped those up so that they were about the same thickness as the wire, and then in between each um, layer of wire, I did um, four turns, or four layers of newspaper, and then the last layer of newspaper to cover it all over, I did um, about eight again, and then I wrapped it with the, the um, thread to keep it all together. Um, so, and I did five layers of um, wire all together, so that I had about 600 turns of wire in total. All right, so I put some primary wires on it, and um, there's five turns for each one, and then I found a nice jar. At least this one will be used for the vacuum. I'm not sure if I'm going to um, actually have it in this um, permanently, but I'll have to make a new cap for it. This can be my vacuum cap. And let's put some oil in. I'm just going to use um, canola oil or vegetable oil or whatever. This is canola oil. So we'll pour it in. I already tested it to see if it um, is good with high voltage. And it seems like it does a pretty good job at insulating, so that's good. All right, now I've got it hooked up to my... Um, vacuum pump, which is just a, um, a dehumidifier compressor. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Lots of air. Lots and lots of bubbles. Well, it's certainly doing its job, pulling all the air out. So we certainly don't want any of that air in there. So I guess I'll just leave it, like, run like this for a little while, and see how it goes. Alright, so I've had it under vacuum for about a week now. And there's pretty much no more bubbles coming out of it. A couple small ones here and there. So I think it's good enough. Um, I also upgraded my vacuum system a little bit. I added this gauge and this valve. And I'm using this pump now because this one, or this one actually pump, or sucks a little bit more vacuum than this one. Um, and I also tried connecting them in series, but um, it actually didn't make a difference at all. Um, because there has to be a certain amount of pressure here um, in order to open the check valves. So once you get to that um, vacuum, that amount of vacuum, there's not enough actual pressure difference across the check valve to actually open it. So you can only get to a certain amount of vacuum, which is 700 millimeters of mercury, which is the limit for this pump. So even if I connect this one up to pull a vacuum on this one, there's um, no difference. So um, now I also have it on a hot plate set at 175 degrees Fahrenheit um, just to try to um, make the, the um, oil a little bit more liquid so it um, soaks into the paper better and hopefully gets the air to expand as well and float to the top easier. Um, you probably, if you don't have a vacuum pump, you could probably skip that step. Um, I think if you just heat it up the oil and let the transformer sit in it a couple days, I think that probably would be good, but I decided to go overboard because I have a vacuum pump, <laughs> well, compressor. Um, I also have this little valve here just to um, release the pressure easy, but it actually doesn't release the pressure here, so it goes right back to where it was. So, And I have the, um, the pump on a timer as well because the um, compressors like this, they will totally overheat if you... Um, leave them running like this because they need the um, refrigerant going through them in order to actually cool them. So it's actually getting quite hot here after just half hour because it's on for half hour, off for like one and a half hours. But um, yeah, so I think it's good. So let's take the lid off and um, we'll hook up the wires and test it out. All right, so I've got some high voltage leads connected up. All close pinned in place and everything so it doesn't move around and touch anything it shouldn't. So there's the bottom one coming out there, goes to that alligator clip over there. Now we just gotta hook up the ZVS driver, and we can give it a first test.